cool. So yeah. Hey guys. Um, so yeah, my name is Melvin. I've just recently joined Career Karma. Uh, I want to thank all of you yeah, guys. Thank you. Let me just get my shit on. Time out of your days um, to really uh, ultimately invest in yourself, you know, like taking some time out of this, out of your busy schedules to really, you know, listen to someone with experience, someone that's gone through um, some of the things that you will eventually uh, reach. <clears throat> And you can learn from those experiences. And so uh, I want to applaud all of you guys for really taking that initiative. Um, now we have a very uh, special guest um, coming on to demo her project. Uh, so uh, Katiana, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey guys, um, Katiana. Um, so should I, should I go like full details of who I am and how I started. Okay, so um, it's crazy because I talked to Melvin about this. So my whole journey, how I even started with Kenzie, um, it happened last year where I was working where I thought I wanted to be a lawyer and um, I was working as a legal assistant for um, the NBA. And I thought that was going to be like my dream job. I thought it was going to be everything for me. And then one day I was just sitting at the office and I was just thinking, this is not for me. And I would just, um, and then someone came up with this question about MySpace and then about coding. And I just, it just like, it just popped in my head. Like, I remember that. I miss doing that. I love designing. And then that's when I did my research. And then out of nowhere, I came across designing, UX designing. And I thought that would be perfect for me because I love, I love the thought of shapes, colors, and how things align with each other. So I did more research. And then all of a sudden, um, I posted something on Twitter. I, I can't remember exactly. And then Ruben liked the tweet. And then... Um, I went over to his page and I'm like, who's this person? He has a blue check. Hold on. And then um, did more research. And then I found out that he made career karma um, as well as Timor and his twin brother. So um, after that, I just kept seeing career karma everywhere. Like it was on um, Instagram and all that. And I'm like, okay, let me see what this is about. And then um, I joined career karma and the rest was history. I joined in and it was literally like everything went by so quick but it was just an amazing journey because being in career karma i was the leader for the full stack development group and then um timor reached out to me and told me about kenzie and i was having a difficult time trying to figure out well how can i do designing and do front-end development at the same time and then timor perfect timing texted me and was like hey check out kenzie and i checked out kenzie and they were like you can do six months of UX design and then the other six months as a front end development. <laughs> say less. I was like, literally, I said, say less. I don't even need to do anything else. Applied and then um, I got accepted. I got accepted the day after. And then that's when Timor was like, you should be the leader of Kenzie group in Korea Karma. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I remember hitting up Earth because that's when I heard about Earth. Hey, Earth. Um, she was the first person that got accepted to Kenzie. Um, and then I told her, hey, let's, let's do this. Let's be leaders of this group. And yeah, the rest was history. And now we're here six months after. Um, I am now a UX designer. Earth is a front-end developer. And I believe I saw Reina. Hey, Reina. She is also um, a UX designer. She was in my class. So yeah. That's, that's so exciting. That's been my journey, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy how fast time flies, and uh, right. It, but it's also amazing what you can do in six months. Um, <laughs> yep. What you can accomplish in six months. Um, and I remember my first day when I. It was a long time ago, but when I saw the demo projects of other bootcamp grads, I was like, they build this in uh, like three, four months. I was like what like am i gonna be able to do something like that and this just goes to say to everyone who's on the call now it doesn't matter what stage you're you're at this might be your first day on career karma this might be your third month um but you can learn a lot if you follow a roadmap if you have instructors you have your peers helping you and we're just super excited to have uh, 
a few Kansas students. I see Earth on there. There's a few others. And uh, we'd love to see some of the projects that you've built because this is super special because this is your way of showing to people like what you can do in six months and what can you learn and how can you prepare for these jobs of the future, right? Uh, and, and what uh, skills employers are looking for. Yeah, also by just even going through the, the exercise of just sharing your portfolio projects, you're starting to practice the muscle memory of being like, hey, these are actually all of the incredible things that I've learned over the past couple of months that have enabled me to build things and create things and bring things into the world in service of others that are just really, really awesome and really cool. And and by doing so, by explaining this process to other people, I actually am solidifying um, some of the learnings that I'm coming across. And it's like really, really incredible to be able to uh, communicate that with potential employers, um, you know, having it on even like a blog or your own personal brand, right? Like telling your story through your own story, but also being able to, you know, communicate those skills that you've worked so hard to gain. Now, I also want to um, go ahead and introduce the fact that we do have discussions as a forum and a um, place where you can start practicing these sorts of things. Now, we're going to be taking questions, like some of the top questions from uh, the post that is currently, if you go into your app on Career Karma and you go into the discussions tab, you can find um, the portfolio discussions forum. And in there, the, the most recent post that has been posted is for this specific workshop. Now, we can have this Zoom call and it would be really awesome if everyone could join, but sometimes that isn't the reality. And so by having these really engaging, you know, constructive conversations, we can actually have this live within the app so that people that weren't able to be a part of this conversation can go back and look at all the incredible things that we've actually been talking about, some of the questions that get answered, some of the things that Katiana herself has you know, learned throughout her own process and her own experiences. And we can have that be sort of like a um, resource for other people to come across and learn from, you know, and, and reap the benefits from. Um, so at the moment, we're going to have um, Katiana go through uh, some of her, uh, I think this is Neighborly, right? It's called Neighborly. Neighborly. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to go through that project. You can give us a walkthrough and you guys can start thinking about questions that you would like to ask Katiana about her experiences. Um, please for sure drop them down in the comments within the post. Um, the post is called CKAMA Portfolio Projects Demo. Um, jump into those comments. Uh, start posting them and then we'll start picking out like some of the best ones to um, You know answer as well as we'll have some live questions out here that you know if people are interested in, in answer, Having answered to answer them live yeah. right here Awesome. Yeah, so without further ado uh, Katiana, let's uh, I, I'm dying to see the projects that you <laughs> built Awesome um so first off, I do want to say that this was our capstone project. So it was also other classmates that were helping. So it was a group project, basically. Okay. So I will mostly talk about what was my position in this project. But of course, I'll talk about the overall process. So let me share my screen. OK, so. <clears throat> Let me see. I'm gonna have to like put this, okay, perfect. So what I'm gonna do first is, this is called Figma, which is a program that we use for high fidelity um, prototype, which I will get into in a little bit. Um, let's see, we'll play. And it went way far. Not cool. Okay. Um. This is not working as I wanted it to be. 
All right. So this is what I'm gonna do. We're not gonna play it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you like this. So, <clears throat> first of all, I'm gonna talk about our problem. So with this project, we have to come up with any, any app. It could be any concept, anything. So um, we had a Zoom meeting and we talked about, well, what is the problem? Like, what can we think about that a lot of people are concerned about? Or is there something that we can simplify? And by that we mean like, is there something that people love to do, but want to make it simpler in their life? I um, hope I'm making sense. So um, Denise, she was the, her position was the project manager. So she basically just managed what everyone has been doing. And she also helped with the designs. She came up with this problem where people they there's a lot of people out there that like to go to yard sales um they like to like keep their things and they don't know where to put it technically become a hoarder um <clears throat> so she thought about well how about we come up with an app where people are able to access and get things for free um there's a lot of apps out there that people sell their things but what about an app that we can give away our things for free to make our life so much easier and simpler and um, we thought about it and we said, you know what, that's actually a great idea. I think it's perfect because the whole idea of the app will be to give away your things without paying a dime. There is out apps out there that it says a zero dollars and then at the end is like a little cash where you have to pay for shipping or stuff like that. But we wanted our app to be specifically for users to use and not pay anything. So um, we came up with so many names. Um, I can't remember the other name that we had that was super crazy, um, but Neighborly sounded really nice. Um, we thought it was super friendly. We thought it was eye-catching. And um, as you can see on the top right here, this is what we call our low fidelity. Um, <clears throat> so it's like a wireframe and wireframe is basically just the structure of what the app will look like before we go into high fidelity, high fidelity pro prototype. So this is what we came up first. Um, this is the design that we came up with first. And um, we decided to do a little test, just a little bit of a test where this is where my position comes along. I was the, basically the user experience, as in I do my research on users, see what they like about the app, um, ask multiple questions about different things. What do they like about the name? What do they like about the color schemes? Um, is there like a particular um, process that they wanna go through? So that was basically my role. And um, I asked a couple of people in my area, I live in Tampa, Florida, where there's a lot of yard sales. There's a lot of yard sales. There's a lot of people giving away things. And uh, I'm, and I'm, super happy that I was in Tampa at that moment when we were doing the project. So um, I asked around and people were saying, that's such a great name. I think this would be perfect. One lady told me that um, she's tired of going outside. She was like, I don't even want to go outside. Another person was like, I'm afraid to even go to people's houses nowadays. Another person was telling me that um, it will be great because of apps out there that say it's free, but it's not really free. So I thought that was really great. Um, one person did tell me that it wasn't as catching. The whole color scheme was not as eye-catching. So then I brought it to the attention to Denise and Ethan, who are the main designers of this app. And they said, okay, so Ethan wanted to, he just magically thought of this pink color right here. And we thought, hmm, it may be too girly, but maybe if we add in a little bit, like a color contrast. So we thought of the green. And for some reason, it just mixed super well together. It's like a salmon green and this, I mean, salmon pink and this green. It, I don't know, it just looks so perfect. So um, we went with that and um, yeah, the rest was history. So as you can see right here, this is the master component. So this is the part where it's just like little bits. So, okay. In our class, we learned about atoms, molecules, and like the main components. So 
atoms are just like the little things like the little icons in the app and all that molecules is basically something like this so it's like the rectangle and the post item that's what we call a molecule it's just easier for us to understand what these are so that way when we create these apps um i don't know i think it's just like ux lingo i don't know that's how i call it but um yes yeah, so these are all the master components of the app that we used as you can see as i'm going over the um with the mouse going over these this is what it is master components all right so now we're going to go to notifications so the notifications is what you will see before you open the app right um it says hey neighbor you have 24 new messages in your inbox tap now to check them out um this was definitely a process that was just of course um part of the app we want to make sure that users are able to see what it will look like when they get a notification from our app this right here is our sign up so here's the logo neighborly sign up for neighborly sign up with facebook sign up with google and then here it goes again this is still the login page this is how the loading page will look like so um keep in mind that we have to make sure that this is not every single detail of like every step of the app, but this is like the main parts of the app that I'm showing you guys. And then this is the sign up lo login. Hey there neighbor, tell me, uh, tell me about yourself. The people call me, I've been on this earth for zip code. We try to keep it interesting. You know, with this new generation, gotta keep everything interesting. <laughs> and then, um, Yes, so this is another sign up login. And then right here, just a bit more information. So this is how your email page will look like. And now we get to the menu. So this part was very interesting for us because um, Ethan, who designed these circles right here, he did it through Photoshop, by the way. Um, at first, he had request an item on top of the circles. So, um, we had that for a while and then my job i went and told a couple people to look over the app and i asked them what do you think about these designs what do you think about um the menu page which is this one and they told me that they did not understand the circles now this is when it comes to user experience is very very important to do testings because something like that just happened like we thought it was perfect we thought the circle was nice with the the request an item on the top so request an item on the top post an item on the top so it was literally nothing inside the circle at first and then when i did my testing with a couple of people they told me they didn't like it this one person said that how um they didn't understand at all so i told ethan and denise and they said okay let's go back and redo this and then they just did a simple change which is just put it inside the circle and trust me, it definitely worked. I went back to the same people and they say they loved it. So that was that. Then we get to request an item. So when you click on request an item circle, I really wish I could play this for you guys. So that way you can see it in full action. Where did these lines come from? That's so weird. Um, oh, I, I, think someone, uh, I think someone on the call must have uh, drawn on the screen. Oh, uh, okay. I think they, looks like there's a way to remove them. Uh, okay. They want to be a part of the project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It's completely fine. It's not bothering me anyway. Let me see if I can. Um, okay. Um, I don't, okay. It must be a way, but it, maybe. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's gone. Perfect, perfect. And then for this page, which is when you click on request an item, this is how it will look like. Um, I do want to point that it is very important. So there is, I hope I'm saying this right, Raina, um, help me out on this part. I think it's called material design. Yes, I'm that's not exactly right. Okay, there you go. Boom. So material design, it's very important as a UX designer to go through that because there's a lot of um, things that you have to make sure it's part of it. And what I mean by that is um, there's like particular things like, um, it could be the size of certain um words it could be the color it could be anything like that you have to follow those rules to make sure what just happened 
oh, there you go. <laughs> you have to make sure that you follow the material design so that way you have more of a positive feedback and making sure that you don't have a lot of mistakes. Um, so with that being said, we had to follow the material design aspect. We had to make sure everything was aligned perfectly. Um, we had to make sure like the words were sized perfectly the way it's supposed to be and stuff like that. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. And um, so for the next page is post an item. So if you click on post an item, this is what the page will look like. And mind you, this is mostly from, I can't remember which program Ethan used. He used another one, but he, he did a lot on that program. Can't remember. Um, so my feed, so this is what the feed will look like right here. Let me go down a little bit more. So the reason why this is long is because it, when you play it on Figma, you can actually scroll up. So that's why it's super long. But this is how the feed will look like when you want to um, look at what's around your neighborhood, who's giving away what for free. And uh, we try to make it as friendly as possible, make it engaging for people. And then right here. So this is basically the next step, right? So this is like, your post, um, your gift to the world. I have two bags of fresh homemade M&M cookies, one bag per person. And then right here, you can see, I would love to snatch a bag. Cookie me, please, trying to make it funny. But um, this is how it would look like with discussions um, through the app. And then here's another one, but in a different color. Yes, I remember we did this. So we did this color and then we did this color. And the reason why we did those two was because we wanted to see um, actually with the two colors, which is very important UX design as well, we wanted to make sure that these people know the difference. So this green part right here is because this person, <clears throat> it was only chosen by one person. And then this black is chosen by two people. Now, little things like that, does it does matter. I, I was about to say kind of, no, it does matter because users do pay attention to little details like that. So that's important. And then <clears throat> right here is the search and filter. And we learned about this in class. Um, it is important to put in a search and filter because that's like one of the most important parts of your app. Um, with this part, we did a location type of search and filter. So as you can see right here, the radius is between five miles through 100 miles. So you're able to locate free things between that radius. And then this is what it will look like when you view an item. We have the person's page where they're located and of course the description. And then right here, you can click on to message the person if you're interested. And then this is right, this right here is the neighbor's profile. Once again, try to make it look um, engaging, simple, but engaging. Here's the profile again. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Yes, here's a profile again. This is when you go to the menu side. Um, yes, this is when you go to the menu side and you're able to look at your profile, look at somebody else's profile and you are able to see their um, free items at the bottom. And this is what it will look like when you have friends. And then this part right here is when um, you're in the message. So I, I really wish I can show you guys how to even navigate that. But um, yeah, this is what it will look like when you message someone. And then this is what it will look like before you message someone. So it will have like the list of people that you've already contacted. So yeah, so this is it. I'm going to see if I'm able to try this one more time before I finish. Let's see if I'm able to do this. Because I do want you guys to like understand the whole um, being able to click on it and actually see how this app works. Let's see. No, 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 no. Let's try this again. OK, 
Okay, so I don't think it will show me, but let's see, request an item. Oh, okay, perfect. So yeah, so let's go back. So let's say if you wanna request an item. So this is like a, this is what you call a high fidelity profile where you're able to see it visually through, of course, an iPhone. And then we have the low, fidel low fidelity pro prototype where um, you are able to just see like a wireframe, which I did not explain. Um, a wireframe is basically just like the basic view of what your app will look like with shapes and with <clears throat> where certain things are going to be located on your app. But this is just a high fidelity one where you get to see it visually. So if you click on request an item, there it is. Yep, pretty much. And then you go back and then let's post an item post the item. This is what it will look like when you post it. Then we go back. Um, your friends, there's your friends right here. Let me see. You click on Morgan. There's Morgan's page and I'm scrolling it. Oh, let's see message. There you go. So you click on message and there's her message. All right, we're going to go back, back, back. We're going to click on your feed. And this is how your feed will look like. And this is me just scrolling. And then your profile. So this is this will be your profile and then what you have that you posted. Actually, no, I'm sorry, not what you posted. <laughs> this is a gift. So this is what someone else sent to them. There you go, that they're interested in. So yeah, so that's um basically the capstone project that I did right before I finished Kenzie. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free. Yeah, Katiana, thank you so much yeah. for that. That was that was actually so crazy. I didn't I didn't know all of those things for you know UX design and like what they do. I've always been kind of like really interested because some of those apps are like the one that you just made right there, the one that you walked us through was looking banging. Like I could see something. really. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, super interesting. Um, so I actually wanted to open it up to any questions that um, some of the audience has, um, you know, on your experience and, you know, things, you know, about UX design in general. Um, so how do we want to? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll, what we'll do is I'm going to ask people, um, I know there's a lot of questions in the comments. Um, just uh, unmute yourself. Uh, do like a 20, 30 second introduction if you're learning UX or engineering, just so Katiana knows um, where you're coming from. And then just feel free to ask your question. I can go first. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, y'all. I'm Brooklyn. So basically, I just started um, my journey to UX. And I'm currently taking a Udemy course about um, user experience design just to build a couple projects to put on my um, portfolio so i guess my first question is what is a good place to host for um host my project like where can i post it at or like save it so people can see it does that make sense yeah. do you think like github would be a good um portfolio or no um <laughs> oh i'm sorry um github is actually a good one as well um I'm not exactly sure. So we have like a portfolio screen for, I mean, portfolio section in Kenzie that I use It's called ePortfolio. So that's what I've been using to post all my things in. Um, I'm not exactly sure where is the best. GitHub was literally the next place. Um, someone did tell me, yeah. So someone just said net, um, net I can't even pronounce it. Is it net Liffy? Net, net like Netlify. Netlify. Net there you go. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> thank I, you. I would I would Google and compare Heroku and Netlify because there's some differences between them. Gotcha. Which, yeah. Which host. Mm -hmm. So that one is also perfect from what I've been hearing from people. So yeah, definitely check those out. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Can I jump in really quick? Go ahead, Earth. So just so you all know, so between Katiana, Rena, Sasha, who's on the line, Brandy, Brandy. Brandy, who's on the line, Laverne, I think is on the line. We all graduated from six months of Kinsey on Friday. 
So I don't know if anybody knew that, but I'm just letting y'all know we did graduate on Friday. That's a huge congratulations! 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 Yeah, that's thank you, thank you. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry, but shout yourself out if you did graduate on Friday. Oh, and Cecily. Yes, and Cecily. I see you, Brandy. Brandy got Brandy got swallowed up by school because I haven't seen Brandy in forever. They they have locked her in a room. Brandy has been hiding in these books and coaching big time. Yeah, I'm all up. Brandy is like the she's like the 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 greatest of all time coach mm -hmm. at Kenzie right now. Okay. Yeah. Percent. Yep. Hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really amazing how you all also stuck together through this whole uh, bootcamp experience and um, I think it was great to see that Katiana described the UX side and the design side of things but um, you're not just learning UX right Katiana someone asked in the comments when is this app gonna be live are you gonna be coding it up in your in the remaining six months or are you guys gonna do something different so um we're actually they did not really discuss when it comes to the capstone. I'm pretty sure we are going to use this app and code it. I'm pretty sure we will. Um, but if not, my group already talked about this. We are thinking about doing it ourselves anyway. So we're going to go more in depth with it. Um, everything that we learned from the second part of Kenzie, it's, we're going to yeah. put that towards the project. So, yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this question because I think there's a lot of people who are like, I want to build an app, so I just learned how to code. Can you talk about the importance of design? Because it, it's not just the engineers who build it. There's a whole mm -hmm. team and different roles on the team um, who come up with ideas and do the UX design and how the app looks. Can you talk about right. those roles in comparison of what each person does in order for someone to even have an app out there? Yeah. So, wait. So, you're talking about the difference between a UX and a um, coder? There's like a lot of roles. I know there's okay. a lot of roles. Can you just uh, share with the folks uh, what are the different roles, like who does what, and the importance of uh, UX designers too? Yeah, so one thing I will, like I always tell people when I describe UX designer, like look at your, like your favorite social media, like Twitter. Look at Twitter. What does the color mean to you? When you see the color, when you see the symbol of Twitter, what does that mean to you? Who does that? UX designers. So um, I basically say that everything that you're looking at in front of your face is what UX does. Um, your overall experience through an app is what a UX designer does. So um, with a UX designer, we basically <clears throat> focus on the UX experience. We focus on the designs. We make sure that we make sure that the process of a user using the app is efficient and simple we don't want no complications nothing like that so um yeah so that's the role of a ux designer um the coder so the front end development part um they take care of the front end so all the design so i would say front end and ux kind of work together as well well mostly they do work together because front end does work with the whole front end part of the app which is of course, the design part. And then, of course, we have the back end, which they take care of all the back end part of the app. So um, when it comes to UX, there is different types of roles. Like there's a UX researcher, which is what I described what I did on the app. Um, we basically do most of the research, research on users, research on, it could be anything, demographics, um, anything that can help build the app accurately. And, um, I believe there was another one. Reina, is there another um, position? I mean, another part of UX that I'm missing out on? Well, also, you know, we start off with the interviews. Mm -hmm. We have to know exactly what the client wants. And right. then we do different iterations of that. There's also us doing a journey map. What is it that the client really wants to achieve? What's the problem? How can we solve it? And then we sketch it out. And then we use a journey map, which basically describes what are we doing? How are we doing it? What is your end goal? Do you want notifications on the app? Do you want it on the desktop? How do, how do you want to engage the person who's going to use the app? Because that, that was the first thing 
when Katiana started speaking is what we had learned that first month, really getting behind the mindset and the psychology of when you use an app, because everybody has a device, an Android or a, um, an Apple. But do you ever think about all these different things? You know, somebody actually meticulously sat there, interviewed someone, asked questions, did user testing just to just so we can go, oh, oh, I'm gonna use this app. Oh, somebody's messaging me. I mean, just look at your phone. There is a bazillion things you can do with this. Of course, you got Facebook and Twitter, but you also have PayPal. I can't tell you 10 years ago, I even knew what PayPal was. But now that we've gone through user design, I get it. So if you use PayPal, you know that it's something you can send money through. But it's so much more. You can shop with it. You can even send money to other people. So we started learning more about that with user design. And then we kind of cartooned it. Remember those comic strips from back in the day? So with cartooning, it's really called storyboard. So someone is actually sketching it out and writing the story from beginning to end. And then we're doing the personas. So if you think of the person who's actually going to use the app, it's going to be a certain person who has a certain problem and they want it solved. So for like Katiana was mentioning Twitter, we use Twitter for so many different things, but think of those corporations and how they want their users to engage with their app. So I won't take up a lot of time with it, but it's very interesting. And if you are considering UX and you're that creative person, I would suggest you go for it. Definitely. Yep. Thanks, uh, Reina. And, uh, and, and a huge shout out to you for having CK on your home screen. <laughs> <laughs> that, that means a lot to us. Um, I think there were, there were, there were a few questions, um, uh, Katiana, for you in terms of how is the UX engineering course structured? Uh, can you yeah. give a little brief rundown? Yeah, I was literally just typing that. So um, Hannah, to answer your question and everyone else that said the same thing. So the whole program is called UX engineering. So with Kenzie, you can do, um, not you can do, there is a program where you do six months of UX and then the other six months is front end, front end development, which is why it's called overall UX engineering. So um, Kenzie, they do give you the option to, you know, stick with just the UX or just stick with the front end or just do the whole overall, which is 12 months in total. But it is divided into two. So, yeah. Yeah. And you just graduated the UX portion, which was six months and right. you have six months of front end. Uh, front end. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's really mm -hmm. cool. And I know there is a, I know there is a Earth who is doing software engineering. So her 12 months is broken up into six months of front end and then six months of back end. Um, I know some people are, are just joining Career Karma and everyone's like, I just want to know how to build apps. Um, what it comes down to is that there's a lot of different paths. Uh, there's a lot of different roles, right? If you're more creative, you can think about like, what is the, what is, what does something look like? How do I make the user happy? How do I make the, how do I solve the user's problems? And that's, that's the UX side, the user experience side of things. Uh, and there are some coding boot camps that, that just teach you the user experience side, right? Mm -hmm. However, the, like with Kenzie, you, you also learn how to actually build it because typically in a workplace, um, if, if there is a designer who just comes up with the designs, all they're doing is just coming up with the designs and passing over the visuals to the engineering team. But there's also some companies that hire people who are hybrids, so they can do both front end and they can also design. And then you can just give that person a problem and they can build it from scratch and they can do the research around users and so on. Uh, so I hope that makes it clear for people listening on the call. Um, any, I know we have about uh, 20 minutes left. Any other questions for Katiana? Feel free to unmute yourself, introduce yourself and ask the questions. I got a question. Jump in, um, yeah. <clears throat> so Team Roar obviously knows me well and a couple of you guys on this call have seen me around. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mia. Um, I'm a disabled mom of four. I got into coding about 13 and a half years ago uh, in my freshman year of high school. 
was in a computer science course, ended up getting everything done really, really quickly. My teacher decided to challenge me, had me take apart a computer to see if that's where I was interested. <clears throat> I can do it. I don't like it. Uh, so then he had me pick up coding and I kind of fell in love with HTML and dabbled in it for many, many years. Um, didn't really take it anywhere. I could design web pages and stuff, but I wasn't sure how to get from one page to the other and stuff like that. So it was very basic, simple design. And then um, back in November, I decided that I wanted to go back into coding because of my physical limitations. I can't really work an average job. And I was scrolling on my Facebook, found Career Karma, and I always laugh about this, but the reason I clicked on the advertisement wasn't because it was like, oh, uh, coding and all this other stuff. It was pretty. It looked nice, and I wanted to look at the app. <laughs> so <laughs> I clicked on the app, and, you know, uh, as Katiana said, here we are, the rest is history, because now I'm signed up with Kenzie. I started on the 28th for UX design engineering, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I can't begin to explain how excited this whole journey has me, just because it is pretty much my lifelong dream. It's the only dream I've held on to for all this time. So enough about me, Katiana. My question for you is, what was your favorite part about going through this project? Because it's like the application of your first six months of schooling. What was your favorite part about going through this project? And what was your least favorite part and why? Good question. So um, my favorite part about this project. So I'm all about reason why me being a us um, user experience designer. Um, I love to get feedback from users. So my my favorite part of this whole entire app, besides the designing part, even though I didn't do the designing part, but um, it was mostly to interact with users, understanding what they want, what they need, um, just basically overall making sure that we satisfy those needs slash wants. Um, let's see, the least part. Honestly, I did not have a least part. Everything about the app was challenging. It was extremely challenging, but it, I, I enjoyed every minute of it because it's like, at the end of the day, you get to see everything come together and it just comes to life. And it's just like a beautiful thing that you created. So um, yeah, I have no least thing about it. Um, I will say it, it was challenging. It was definitely challenging. It's not easy. Um, but yeah, overall it was great. Yeah. Thank you for your answer. And I wanted to say thank you for sharing your project. Um, was that whimsical that you used, by the way? Whimsical is what we use for wireframing, but um, what you guys saw, we use Figma. Oh, okay. Because so, yeah. I was like, I recognize Figma. that from uh, <laughs> the entry stuff for your UX oh, design, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so, I don't want to yeah. ruin anything for anyone, but uh, Whimsical and Figma are the best things right now for designing. It's not even yeah. funny, but I just wanted to say thank you. Your project looks real, real nice, and it just thank you. beautifully done, simple, innovative. Love it, love it, love it. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank I want to also much. give Mia a shout out because she's also, she now is, she now is a co-leader of the Moms to Code squad. And um, she reached out to me a few weeks ago and she's like, hey, my cohort doesn't start until end of January. What can I do more to contribute and give back? And so huge shout out to her. And it's amazing to see the whole karma piece flowing from people who are just starting to people who are graduating from their boot camps and it just keeps on happening more and more. I think um, at the end of the day, our mission is to not just help you get your first job, but to help you uh, build and create and innovate. And in my mind, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to, folks to just get a job at a company. I want you to build your own companies. And to do so, you'll need to know design, data science, engineering, and the most importantly, you'll need people, right, to build those projects with you. And so you have 51 people on this call and you have a whole community behind you. So if you have an idea for an app, don't wait until you graduate. Start building these connections and finding others to build with. Team Moore, like I appreciate the shout out, but how could I not want to help out Career Karma when you guys literally gave me everything I was looking for in a very small little place. I've made so many friends on here that it's ridiculous. I have such good resources now. Mm -hmm. Like I, the project page that I shared with you earlier, which is the whole reason I ended up in here. Um, I literally just got a 
bug in my ear and I was like, hey, I'm going to go work on this. And every time I ran into a problem that I couldn't figure out how to solve, I have people now that I can be like, hey, I know you know how to do this stuff. Like, I'm having problems with this one specific thing. And people were able to come in and help me. Mm -hmm. uh, the Code Famiglia squad actually helped me with a lot of the user design part of my web page. Like, it would be insane for me not to want to give back to this little company that is helping what's the goal again because i know you guys say it on your breaking into startup stuff all the time so our goal is to help a billion people um yeah level up and get their next careers um over the next decade um so yeah count me in i want to be a yeah, part of that no matter where i go on our own so thank you so much mia for contributing and to everyone who's on the call too uh career karma it's free and it, it will always be free the only prices that you help people behind you once you're a few stages ahead. Um, there's a lot of things that Arthur Rubin and I could have been working on um, if it wasn't for Career Karma, but we wanted to tackle the issue that uh, today, um, all the tools that Katiana uses, that Earth uses, Reina uses, they didn't exist 10 years ago. And you're not gonna be going to college to learn how to use um, some of these tools because everyone thinks that you need to learn Photoshop if you wanna be a designer. But Katiana mentioned, and I think someone said in the comments, maybe it was Reina, that you don't learn Photoshop at Kenzie, you learn some other tools. And so the reason it's important to point out is that the bootcamp prepares you for the jobs of the future. And as the whole industry is catching up on what they should be learning and teaching, you all now have a way of kind of learning on the latest uh, stack, the latest technologies and building together. So. Um, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm not sure if I'm muted. Um, hey, my name is Josh. Jump in. Hey, um, uh, I just returned to Career Karma. I spent some time. I was trying to find out what the uh, perfect major for me would be. And just like Tatiana and Mia, uh, I'm really excited to be learning uh, uh, UX design and a little bit of fun and development. And it's been a journey that um, I, it's just, I can't explain how happy I am. So I, I enjoy and sympathize with y'all like it, it's one of those things that's so exciting it's almost a dream come true that this opportunity is like presented to us through career karma um so anyways my question to you is um have you guys explored um, um girls and everybody are like have you explored um, adobe xd I, i've been finding out that um i've been doing some uh, wireframing and, and some designs with it and there's this auto animation feature that allows you to to kind of um do the same things that um that some other apps you have to you know in sketch they design and then the animations have to be sent to another app but however adobe xd has all of it kind of in one have you guys explored that and um what what are you using for front-end development for apps uh, like is there like drag and drop type builders like wordpress um dv okay, sorry it does um, a lot no no it's fine um i can answer the ux part and then i'll have the um, front-end development answer the second part um so for us what we use is we they gave us an option to use Adobe XD, but at Kenzie, we use Whimsical, which is mostly for wireframing, and then we would transport it into Figma to do the animation, a little bit of the animation. So that's what we use. Um, Adobe XD, we, we are free to use it. Um, they, they didn't say no about it. Um, the only thing is a lot of people couldn't use it because you have to pay for it, but um, if that's something that you're mostly into, if you're mostly experienced in, then you're okay to use it. Um, and I believe in my experience using Adobe XD, I love it. I love it so much. I feel like it just brings out the realness of an app. So um, I hope I'm answering your question. Am I answering your question? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, just, I okay. just wanted to say like essentially hi too and like, you know, and, uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm excited to be here and, and I'm just showing awesome. that I'm in the same kind of Passionate. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I also want to say that um, post this call, um, the AMA is going to be uploaded to YouTube and we're going to share that link inside of discussions. It is a brand new feature we just released recently, just so you all can have these types of conversations there. Um, please, if you have questions that you didn't get to ask, you can ask inside of the discussions and in the comments, you can share some of the tools that you've used that they were helpful. And I think this is also a great way to give back to other people who are starting out and figuring out what tools to use. Um, yeah, we have about 10 minutes. Uh, Katiana, can you still be with us? Or I know you had to drop off earlier. 
Is yeah, it? but it's okay. Um, I can still hang on tight. I, I canceled my plan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. Tatiana, yeah. I've got uh, one question for you. Wow. Yeah, sure. So uh, can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So um, did you guys keep a, a record, a tally or a log of how many labor hours, how many, uh, how many hours you've invested into this project uh, with your team? Oh, um, we actually did not. So we spent about, we, let's see, we started the project last month. So in total, because I remember the date, it took us four weeks to do our project. Okay. That whole right. overall experience, it took about four weeks to do. All so right. um, we did not, I, I, actually, I wish we did. Um, we did not record how long it took us for each step. But overall, it did take us four weeks. And it, it's a process. It's okay. not like in like a week thing. It really yeah, is. I'm just very impressed yeah. that, that four <laughs> weeks, I mean, four weeks with, mm -hmm. how, how many people were in your group? Um, there was four of us. That's ridiculous. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm thoroughly yeah. impressed with the, uh, the product. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. We have about uh, eight minutes. Um, anyone else have any other questions? Maybe as, um, as we're wrapping up, I'd love to give, I'd love to pass the microphone to Earth and maybe Earth, can you give us a quick overview of like, just like share with us what your experience has been in the last six months? Because I know you've been learning a software engineering. So um, I'm, I don't know if we'll have time to dive into your project. We'll probably set up a different call for that. But what were you learning in the last six months? And like, how was your experience doing Kenzie? Um, well, I have to say that the experience is, it's, it's been, to be honest, it's been very daunting, but when you have a circle of people around you, um, that, you know, we hold each other accountable, um, and, you know, just getting up in the morning and, okay, classes at what 945 or stand up is at 945 and just you know keeping everybody accountable your 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 crew or your team um it's it was it was tough but you know you push through and um sometimes you cry cuz i know i cried a few times um i had that imposter syndrome a lot especially mm -hmm. in the beginning but you get through it. Um, I, I can't, I mean, I can't like thank so many people enough. I mean, especially like, you know, you actually kind of fall off a of career karma. So you can actually focus on what you're doing. You're gonna fall off. Cause I know I did, there, you know, there was times where I was on career karma every day, but at some point you gonna wanna buckle down and get those grades in on time or whenever they say to turn them in, you know, you're, you're gonna wanna like really buckle down and, and get it. Um, I, I, I can't stress enough if you haven't started yet with, the, with Kenzie or whatever school you're going to, um, it, it's a really good idea to do some Udemy um, free code camp, like, I can't stress that enough, especially for someone like myself that has had no experience in coding, like, what? <laughs> there was stuff that, like, this is like an alien language to me, but once you buckle down and you get in your circle and they, all right, Earth, let's get it. We gonna stay up until like two in the morning and get this or go to bed and get some fresh eyes on it in the morning. Um, like right now I'm on my break. So I'm not really thinking about <laughs> coding anything cause I've been coding for the last six months. So I'm taking my break, even though I did go to Disney world in December for the holidays. I'm telling you when it's time to take your break, take your break. Um, but yeah, just, you know, 
you guys, I know if you're if you're gonna hop in and get in a school or a boot camp, buckle down and get it. Yeah. We got it. It's been six months and <laughs> that's all I can say, you know. Um I know I've had talks with even though uh Raina um has been in uh UX and I'm in the front end, you know, we've had like some personal talks, like you're gonna be all right, sis. Yes, sis, you know, just some heart to hearts with certain people. I, I can ba- I can back that up. Like I'm I'm in this group that Earth is talking about. And I, oh my God, I, I, I wanted, I wanted to throw this computer across the room. Yes. I, I was ready to give up. I was like, what have I gotten myself into? What is this madness? And we, they we all, had go, we had to go get her. Go get yeah, her. Yeah, they all like, came and got me. They like, nope, you ain't nope. And so, Cecily like, got a whole come to Jesus meeting, baby. She got the entire <laughs> thing. Exactly. Yes. So I cannot stress enough if you have well I'll, I'll say before I started Kinsey I didn't have this group quite yet I found the group once I was in Kinsey so if you don't have like a group of people that you can really like go to and talk to quite yet don't stress about it it'll like come in time but I I do highly 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 recommend that you uh on your little to-do list to like find your group find that group of people that you can go to no matter what um because like with career karma uh i like i knew earth that i saw brandy and whatnot but i didn't like really talk to them like that it wasn't until like i went into kinsey and then in kinsey we have like a specific uh what is it what's the word a uh channel there we go specific channel for career karma people that's when i really met everyone and so if you don't have a group yet, it'll come in time. But yes, I do highly recommend uh, like finding like a small knit group that you can go to and talk to. So, so th- that's actually a great point that you, that you bring up. And, and finding that group is sometimes going to be um, a difficult endeavor at the beginning. But I think that these discussions that we have just uh, recently released could be a really awesome place to... Um, you know, put yourself out there, really like let people know what you're all about. Um, We have an amazing discussion forum called Add a Chapter. And you can read a little bit more about my story, about Timor's story, our tours and Ruben's. We've all posted um, little uh, posts about, you know, our own chapters, like our own life chapters, our stories, like up to this point, like our aspirations, um, I, I started off by, by saying, like, my mother's life story is one of the greatest books that I've ever read. And in it, like, a lot of my identity lies. And by putting myself out there, like, you guys get to know, like, who I am fundamentally as a human being. And some people r- will really resonate with that. And some people will see, like, the certain aspirations that I have as, like, an individual. And through, you know, putting yourself out there, using these discussions, jumping in, engaging, communicating with the community you can really find like um, your squad and, and really just develop really strong, deep um, bonds with, uh, you know, all of these beautiful, amazing people that are really tr- just trying to, at the end of the day, level up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think it's also a good way for you all to get feedback and advice from people a few stages ahead of you. Um, the, the same way how Katiana was explaining her research process for uh, speaking to users, seeing um, what problems they had, what do they wish that they had. Um, we've done a lot of that as, uh, a, a lot of that with all of you. And a lot of people have told us, like, they want to meet people outside of their groups. Um, but sometimes you're limited by the squad. Maybe you're in um, two or three different squads and you're missing out on meeting someone who's like your future co-founder, right? And so... Uh, definitely utilize discussions, provide us with feedback. We're making a big push now to make our community aware that it's now out there. So we would appreciate a lot of your help um, posting, but also providing us with feedback. And um, to what Melvin was saying, um, no one really knows what your mission is unless you actually say it out loud and you share it with the world. And if you're truly passionate about that mission, 
that's what you should be doing because then other people can see that you might have a common mission with them and they'll join you and you can get there a lot quicker. Uh, and that's, that's exactly what Career Karma wants to do. So um, as we're wrapping up this call, I want to again thank Earth for sharing about her story, Reina. Um, there's so many of you, Katiana, that kind of started out in Career Karma just as people who downloaded it from Twitter or Facebook. And now you all are literally changing your lives and changing your careers. And uh, I'm excited to see all the lives you'll change six months from now or two years from now. So uh, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, always great to see um, familiar faces. And um, I know this journey could be tough. So just a reminder that just keep going. Um, you only need one job to hire you. And with this type of portfolio, with the skills that you have, that's gonna be the biggest thing that you have going for you in order for you to make a good impression on the hiring managers for you to get a job. So. Yeah, want to say thanks to everyone. Um, Katiana, you're on the app, right? And you're you're part of the Kenzie squad. You're part of the, or you're the leader of the Kenzie squad. Um, so if people want to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to find you? Um, definitely just type in my name, Katiana Theodore. Yeah. Um, I'll put it on the chat right now. Katiana Theodore, just reach out to me there. That's like the best way to contact me. Um, I will be honest in the beginning, not in the beginning, during the process of Kenzie, I haven't been too active. Kenzie really got yeah. me busy, but trust me, I will respond to you guys for sure. I'm, yeah. I'm there now, like all the time. So reach out. That's super cool. Thank you so much. And um, I want to say thanks for everyone who joined tonight and who stayed with us. I know it's past nine o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, excited for all of your journeys to start or to keep going. And uh, we're always here from you, for you folks. Thank you. Yeah. Let's give uh, Katiana a round of applause and Earth and Rena. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone, everyone, let's break in. Thanks, Thanks for uh, staying on. Christy, Kenny, Leo, Craig, uh, Marina, Samuel, Mia. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.